everybody, and welcome back to <clears throat> yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. My name is Charles, and with me today, as always, is my lifelong friend and co-host, Dylan. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend, Charles. I'm ready to talk some fantasy with my friend as well, Dylan, but not just any fantasy today. Oh. Long-time listeners of the show have probably figured out by now that we love to read uh, fantasy books on the show. And the thing about reading fantasy books is you have to make the decision on which book you're going to read next. Isn't that right, Dylan? It's true. Thank you for explaining that to uh, mm-hmm. our listeners. You can't read a book without picking which book to read (laughs) and that's the kind of uh astute observations you come to friends talking fantasy for but we have a very special way of choosing books on this podcast and Mm -hmm. it's based on our friends pitching fantasy series of episodes and this is the one where we reveal which books we're going to choose based on pitches that each of us provided in two previous episodes so charles pitched three books to me i can only choose one to be among our next two reads and i pitched three books to charles and he can only pick one of those to be among our next two reads Mm -hmm. and that's been that's been the case pretty much for like four years now that we decide (laughs) Probably most of the books that we read that way. If you haven't yet listened to the pitching episodes from last week, then now is a good time to go back and do that because, you know, it's always nice to hear the pitches and hear why we're deciding what we're deciding on this episode. But luckily, we're not alone when it comes to figuring this out we have the help of you all our wonderful listeners and our followers on the social media platforms so we always put this out to a vote just to get an idea of what is our what are our listeners hoping for us to read next and we weigh that in our decision making process we still have the ultimate say at the end of which one we're going to choose but uh, i'm a man of the people charles Mm. claims to be a man of the people as well Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's it's always on our minds how do we how do we make these choices in a way that appeals to all you folks out there so we'll see what we end up going with we have the results of the polls and I'm looking forward to getting into it. I have no idea what Charles is going to pick. I barely have an idea what I'm going to pick. So it's uh, it's going to be an exciting episode. An exciting episode for sure. And Dylan, I just can't wait any longer. I guess since you pitched your books first, let's get into your results. Okay. Well, for any of you who don't remember... I pitched a fantastic trio of books to Charles, if I do say so myself. I pitched The Magicians by Lev Grossman. I pitched Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. And last but not least, I pitched The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. We've got heavy hitters here all around here charles i don't envy you having to choose between them uh but oh yeah you're gonna have to somehow how you feel i am feeling torn um i i guess before i make any judgment one way or the other i would love to know what the people had to say you are you do claim to be a man of the people i did vote so. last time based on an overwhelming response from the poll yeah. so I'm re- I am a man of the people. I've proven that, and I'm willing to hear them out again today. <laughs> okay, well, let's hear them out. Let's start with the people on the artist formerly known as Twitter, other mm-hmm. <laughs> AKA X, mm-hmm. and the results on here. You don't have a resounding victor, Charles. We have mm-hmm. 
in last place, uh, we have The Magicians with 27% of the vote. Mm. In second place, we have Yumi and the Nightmare Painter with 35% of the vote. And then with 38% of the vote, the winner of the poll was The Long Way to a Small Angry okay. Planet. Okay. The space opera uh, that has been promised to restore your faith in humanity charles so <laughs> wow. i mean we also get we get write-ins we get comments people saying all sorts of stuff we we get emails as well um but hmm. uh, these, these are the polls if you just want some raw numbers there charles and i can get into instagram right now if you want or yeah let's just let's get can, into it let's yeah. get all the data Okay, you want some more data? Here it is. Thank you. The Magicians again came in last on Instagram, and that's with 19% of the vote. That's pretty brutal for the Y'all are doing this for dirty. Yeah, I mean, when I pitched it, I, A, I saw it as the, the favorite, among Mm -hmm. the three to end up getting picked by you because i know how much you love this series it's also Mm -hmm. a book that i said it's probably the most like odd (laughs) that we've not covered uh like Mm -hmm. in terms of our history with books our history talking fantasy with each other the magicians was a foundational book for us and it's shocking we haven't covered it on the show yet but uh they're not clamoring for it out there on the interwebs because Mm -mm. we we have a 19 percent last place finish for the magicians we have the long way to a small angry planet in second with 31 percent of the vote Mm -hmm. and then we have a resounding victory for you, me, and the Nightmare Painter on Instagram with 50% of the Whoa. vote. That's interesting. So, yeah, when I you mean, the kind Sando of... Fandos are out, out <laughs> and about, as always. The Sando Fandos the are Brando in full Sando force. Fandos. Brando Sando yeah. Fandos are in yeah. full forso. And um, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Didn't the man, like, recently just sell out another one of his events like he is the man cannot be stopped so um no surprise there i almost pitched one of these myself and in my version of friends pitching fantasy but i ultimately decided not to and that was convenient almost pitched uh one of the secret projects from sanderson you're saying yes one of the batch of secret projects that he dropped that he had written during the pandemic and then he released that video he's like i wrote a book and then I wrote another book. And then I wrote right. another book. And the, the pandemic is hard on all of like it was a little <laughs> bit of a like uh, t- tone deaf uh, <laughs> kind of video. We love Brandon Sanderson. He does so many great things for the community. But I guess I was like, do we really need to fake everyone out with the like the pandemic's hard on everyone? I know it's been hard on you, and it's been so hard on me that I've been more productive than ever. Yeah. <laughs> I've written all these yes. books, but whatever, whatever. We yeah. love saying we, we, we won't get too far. Well, you know, we'll give him some <laughs> grace for that. It was <laughs> yes. a little awkward, but I mean, you can't argue with the results, which is like millions of dollars of Kickstarter mu- funding, tens of millions, and a bunch of great books. And a bunch of great books. Yeah, I guess that too. I I was leading with the tens of millions of dollars. But we got some books too, which is always good. And that's why we're here. Um, Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. Becky Chambers. Hmm. Interesting that it got a little ahead on on Twitter there on X. But uh, couldn't maintain the lead over on Instagram. And then Magicians in Last. That's like a definite... Like definitive last, and and that yes, kind of stings in both polls. I, I kind of remember when you pitched it, at feeling like I don't know where the public perception is on this book. I feel like history has not treated it kindly. You have the sci-fi show, which kind of brought it to more people, but also kind of misrepresents the books, in my opinion, from the one episode I saw <laughs> and from the two you know, episodes, Charles. Don't sell yourself. Oh, okay. Short. We saw two. Uh, it was forever ago. I just remember that it was just a very different creative direction, which is 
not here or there, but for, that's not doing the book any favors. It has a lot of Goodreads reviews. You know, it's a celebrated book. It's got glowing endorsements from tons of authors, including our favorite uh, George R. R. Martin. But um, yeah, I guess people just kind of have let this one go. There's a lot of new modern fantasy out there, and no one's really keeping their focus on this absolute classic and i was coming in like you said dylan this was my favorite uh for sure coming in but it's harder to to look at these numbers and say that you know this is the one i have to pick and i am a man of the people as i've proven time and time again um yes. so it it's hard but to... you're not wearing your hat today which is the <laughs> the plain white hat uh that <laughs> Charles Ward in the last reveal episode is the sign that he is a man of the people. It's how he shows no loyalties. I'm just like you. Allegiances. I'm just like you guys. You know, hat goes on my head, (laughs) except one head at a time, just like everybody else. (laughs) Except most people's most people wear hats with like sporting teams on them or brands or things like that. But you're such a man of the people. Can't be for everyone if you pick something you know that's the issue so blank mm. blank canvas <laughs> for anyone to kind of insert themselves into it's like this is for you and i'm looking at these results and you know i love the magicians more than anything and i do want to read it on the show and i want to talk about it so badly um but i just don't know if now is the time and I've also, we've done some research since, and we've realized that Lev Grossman is coming out with a brand new book, The Bright Sword, in July of this year, which at the time of this recording is less than two months away, or is exactly two months away, depending on what that, oh, yeah. just a little under two months away. So, I mean, wow, what, a, what, what interesting timing for us to be kind of surprised by this. So, um that could be something that we could read. I mean, the only times we divert away from friends pitching fantasy are for when we do extracurricular reading or if a big release is coming out and we'll make time for those. So my my thought is the magicians maybe will have to be another day. It didn't it didn't hold up in the polls. And we've got a chance to read a brand new Lev Grossman book yeah. that come out in july so we can put that one to the side unfortunately for now which leaves us with yumi and the nightmare painter by brando sando and the long way to a small angry planet by becky chambers and now this is tough because i feel like people have their hearts set in either camp they're very different books and so like you're it's going to be a little divisive but the way i i think about this dylan i mean one is like yes they both each won one of the social media platforms polls, but you know Yumi did run away with it. And I think overall, if you aggregate all the votes, you got Yumi ahead by a yeah. sizable margin. The other thing that interests me is one: this is a relatively new release from Brando Sando, which we've covered a lot of his series um, on the show already. But this one is seems like a clear. De- departure and style like you can tell he's having fun with it and you can tell he's dabbling in almost this like poetic like fiction narrative like more fairy tale kind of vibes and I'm kind of interested to see where that goes and as much as I love sci-fi and as much as you've been championing long way to a small angry planet and people have been writing it in I think I'm ready to go on the record today Go with the leading poll results, go with Brando Sando, and pick Yumi and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. Mm. Just going to do it. It's sad to see the long way to a small angry planet. <clears throat> That's a pleasant sound. I mean, you're choking up just, just yeah. thinking yeah. about it. <laughs> but I, you know, it went down in one of the first ever Friends Pitching Fantasies, and years later... Uh, you send it to the grave again but (laughs) if you're gonna have to do that i understand your decision because yumi and the nightmare painter like you said it won the 
the overall vote. Like, I, I don't know if this is an electoral college situation, Charles. Like, <laughs> does a Twitter win no matter what the margin count for a certain amount and then Instagram <laughs> count for a certain amount? I don't know. But if you want to just take raw votes, definitely Yumi was way ahead. It's Brandon Sanderson. I mean, the thing that we always feel confident about is it'll be good. <laughs> like, I, you, you don't know within the range of like good to, oh, this is just incredible that a Sanderson book is going to fall for us, but we know it'll be in that range and no lower. So it's mm-hmm. like you made a very safe choice, Charles. You made a choice that fits well with what the listeners are interested in, even though I would say the long way fans were a vocal minority. Uh, probably more than I don't think there's a lot of like write-ins or comments for Yumi per se Mm. but it's just like people see Sanderson people vote Sanderson and Charles you've shown yourself once again to be a man of the people and I'm I'm really excited uh this is oh yeah me too I haven't read yet. Like I read mm-hmm. The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet. So this is, mm-hmm. and of course the, I've read The Magicians. So this is the only book that'll be, uh, that would have been a new adventure for me. The other two would be revisiting beloved mm-hmm. books, but mm-hmm. uh, it's exciting to jump into something new. And Sanderson, like you said, is taking a totally different approach, it seems like, with this book, like that more... Mm-hmm. He kind of speaks to, oh, this story just kind of flowed out of me. I didn't you do my yeah. usual meticulous outlining way in advance. And I'm I'm really excited to see what what happens when a story just flows out of Sanderson a little more naturally than his usual process. Well said, Dylan. Me too. I, I genuinely am looking forward to... Um, giving this one a try and seeing how Sanderson kind of has progressed as an author and see where he goes when he leaves behind a lot of that structure and plotting for his, for his narrative. So I, I, I'm looking forward to it and there it is. That's one of the books that we're going to be reading next. Isn't it Dylan? It is. And that means that it's on me to pick the other one before we, um, of course, decide the next read among the two using Mm. our patented virtual coin (laughs) flip on the audio-only platform. Mm -hmm. But I have a really tough choice ahead of me, Charles, because we've got just three incredible, I guess, two books and one series here that you are pitching the whole series when it comes to the live ship traders right charles that's right i'm pitching you know two books in a series and you know i'm really interested in hearing the results for these because it's quite a diverse um batch of books here the first one as dylan mentioned is the live ship traders starting with the ship of magic by robin hobb we got a lot of great feedback and we had a ton of fun reading um the uh I keep forgetting the name of the series. The Assassin's Apprentice. Farseer um, Trilogy. Farseer Trilogy, yes. We, we. I mean, I, I just had so much fun reading those. And Robin Hobb is such a terrific author. So I was super excited to pitch the next the next batch of books in the realm of the Elderlings. So hopefully one day we'll read through all of them. But it may take a while. The next book, of course, is The Three-Body Problem by Lou Chixin. Am I saying that right? Um I always struggle with his name, but Lou wrote The Three-Body Problem, and it was you know, a huge Netflix adaptation, and there's so much content that we could squeeze out of all of that, and also it's just a Hugo Award-winning sci-fi fantasy book, and then um, a book called Fairy Tale, which is a pretty common title, but a not-so-common author, and that is Stephen King, or I guess he is common, depending on how you look at it because he is a huge name and he's everywhere but he's also one of a kind and that is of course um his latest uh fantasy release and you could consider like the gunslinger and the dark tower series another fantasy series but he wrote this relatively recently 
And uh, I'm just super interested to see Stephen King's fantasy ability. He's known as a horror author, and then here we are in the fantasy realm. And uh, Dylan, how are you feeling about uh, your, your choice here? I'm feeling somewhat conflicted personally, but uh, lucky enough for me, we have uh, the poll results to guide me. I mean, yeah, I'll start by saying we... I kind of realized we basically have breakout sci-fi hit mm-hmm, in mm-hmm. the three body problem by you ready for this? You ready for this, Charles? I'm ready for this. Okay. Tzu Xin Liu. Okay. Tzu Xin Liu. Tzu Xin yes. Liu. Okay. Okay. <laughs> glad we we'll did let, that. We'll let the, yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> let the pronunciation uh, website cover that for us um mm-hmm. and then we've got the uh breakout uh, i mean everything stephen king writes is larger than whatever <laughs> genre he's writing in uh, <laughs> but uh, we've got fairy tale representing kind of the breakout fantasy book and mm-hmm. these are kind of two mainstream books that are beyond the uh, typical friends talking fantasy more niche genre picks Mm -hmm. and then we've got like exactly the wheelhouse (laughs) of a friends talking fantasy series which is like Mm -hmm. a series that if you just went and grabbed someone on the street and they were and you were like who's robin hobb like what (laughs) right like you're for some reason threatening Uh, who's robin hobb and what's the live ship trader series it's like they probably won't be able to answer that um Mm. but (laughs) uh, you know if you go up to them and ask about stephen king or or the three body problem they probably uh, are Mm -hmm. able to answer Mm -hmm. that but mm-hmm. like friends talking fantasy, we we love covering books that are super accessible to like people who read fantasy. And Robin mm-hmm. Hobb is mm-hmm. like uh, big time in the fantasy genre. Uh, one of those names that we would put on the fantasy modern fantasy Mount Rushmore, I would say. So it's it's kind of like this is a litmus test for our Mm. following and our listeners where it's like uh, it's kind of are these books that are bigger mainstream wise going to beat out uh, a book that is uh, like theoretically more niche but potentially bigger among the following that we've accrued so what are the results of this the the third place book in the twitter poll with 21 percent of the vote was fairy tale by stephen uh-huh. king which kind of surprised me yeah um, interesting. then second place is the three body problem with 38 percent of the vote and first place is the live ship traders series which is 41 percent of the vote so robin hobb edging out the three body problem here Uh and yeah we we can go to instagram now for the other results and you actually see the live ship traders pulling away pretty clearly again we've got 28 percent of the vote went three body problem 30 percent went fairy tale and then 41 percent went to the live ship traders. Wow. And I'll tell you, Charles, I I was kind of thinking when I went into this, I was going to pick fairy tale. Mm-hmm. And to me, that was, as, as a personal thing, I was like, I've really never read a full book by Stephen King, which is kind of sad. And <laughs> we, I think we kind of went through this in... Uh, when you pitched uh, the Dark Tower series yeah. or, or just the Dark Tower mm-hmm. the first book, last Friends Pitching Fantasy, and I was like, I really should read this, but end up not making sense. I was like, okay, this time 
I'm probably going to choose fairy tale and let's just get this monkey off my back. I can't have <laughs> only read the Shawshank Redemption short story in the context of <laughs> Mr. Miller's English class. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Miller would be proud. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Miller, who's going through such a tough time right yeah. now, given what we discussed around uh, the movie Miller's Girl. Yeah, and that's rough. we you also, and there's also the Paul Green Grass, Real Humans. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Paul, it was like, was it like Paul Green Grass? And then the the other name was super, like Paul oh, Green yeah. Grass. The the producers, yeah, um, and they're making a fairy tale. Is it a movie? I think so. I don't know. Could be anything, honestly. But let's see. I'm going down. I remember where I read it. Uh, they sound very made up, these people who are making it. But And then Gregory Goodman, co-producing. <laughs> so you Green got Grass Goodman and, Green and Grass. Goodman are going to make a movie, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> for yes. fairy tale. And it's like, okay, it's super topical, all stuff. But at the end of the day, I guess... This just doesn't really draw in our listeners. I guess there's just a lot of Stephen King content out there, and they don't need to hear our voices on it. Uh, but that makes me think that I guess Fairy Tale will have to wait for another time. Uh, wow. My Stephen King drought will have to <laughs> continue because it's last place on Twitter and. It was basically the same, 30% to 28%. Yeah, I mean, um, 21%, that's the most distant third, even yeah. compared to, like, the last poll with the magicians was at the lowest it got was 25, 27% of the votes. So yeah. that, is a, that is a distant third. I have a theory that, like, that book got tons of distribution because I see it everywhere. But I think I that's too. just because it's Stephen King and it's, you know, getting that red carpet treatment right like roll out the red carpet for stephen king and his release but i guess no one's really vibing i mean i if i haven't heard of anyone that's read it it's titles pretty nondescript so to me at this point the cover like i recognize it from a mile away i just feel like i've seen it everywhere but i guess that's not enough it's a good point, and that seems to be the role of these Stephen King books yeah. at this point, I guess, is they get released, you see them everywhere, you know that they're pulling in t like way more readers than almost anything that we read on this podcast, yeah. but then just as fantasy readers and people in the fantasy community, you don't really hear them being discussed a lot or being like a hot topic in the the fantasy community it's like oh stephen king came out with another book right uh, i mean i feel like the dark tower is kind of interesting like there are fans of that that show up but no one really is championing fairy tale so no and i'm not gonna yeah i'm not gonna go on a limb and and risk my man of the people status <laughs> to select fairy tale over mm. these other great options so so that brings me to to three body problem i guess where it's like i mean this one feels like it should have all the momentum right it's like this show just came out people are really loving the show people have loved this book for a long time it's adapted exciting. by benioff and the... weiss dude benioff yeah. and weiss are back <laughs> <laughs> they're back with a vengeance and it's got Game of Thrones cast members in it. There's every reason to think that if if this book was ever going to be the choice on Friends Pitching Fantasy, that the people would have come out and made their opinions clear by voting for it. And, I mean, then you look at the poll results and it got narrowly edged out on Twitter and then got... Mm pretty substantially edged out <laughs> on instagram like you just have a very clear win on instagram i guess that's like 
I really wonder if this was like a split the vote uh, situation, right? <laughs> like the kind of the mainstream books uh, with fairy tale and three body problems. That's kinda true. Like <laughs> the people who read a lot of the mainstream stuff and are into the uh, like getting into that rather than the uh, more fancy specific stuff. Uh, we're like, oh, I don't know. It's tough to choose between fairy tale and three body problems. So yeah, like no. would all of those fairy tale votes have gone to three body yeah. problem? I mean, probably most of them, right? It's hard to yeah. You, you can't never know, but or at least with the three body problem votes go to fairy. I don't know. But point being, uh, it's and, and three body problem came in last in. In the Instagram, Instagram poll, twenty eight percent. So I'm like, I absolutely love Robin Hobbs' work. We had an amazing time with the Farseer trilogy, and all these people are out there saying the live ship traders is her magnum opus, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. that is, I guess, it's shocking to me to consider that. Oh no, Robin Hobb takes another step forward in her writing from what we already really right. enjoyed. Like I'm curious to see what that looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and three body problem, I guess like we could always watch a show and we can always uh, talk about it through that lens. There's a lot of ways for us to That's stay on top of it, but I mean, to me, the people have spoken, and I'm a man of the people, and I'm going to have to go with the live ship Traders by Robin Hobb. Like, it ended up being pretty cut and dry by the by the end, just because, look, they were all great contenders. If Probably if any of these books won both polls, like live ship Traders did, that would be mm. the book that I'd be choosing. And wow. The, the people have spoken. They want more Robin Hobb. Uh, it's very impressive for a second series to win right. out, like when over these huge books. But that just speaks to how great these books must be. So starts with Ship of Magic, if I'm correct. Um, you are correct. I guess we're diving back into the world of Robin Hobb. <laughs> and I'm super excited Ooh, to yes. see where things go. So I, I know this is one of those things where it's like I would have been super excited to read yeah. any of these. And like this is definitely the bigger commitment of yes. all of the books that we've pitched today. So um, I'm ready for that. But it's Robin Hobb. Like I'm OK. I'm, I'm ready for that. I mean, she, it was a finalist in our best read of the past year on the show. So you yeah. got to think that that's got to, that that's something that you have to continue. And then, then the fans, I'm glad that the fans aren't burnt out of it either and, and want more as well. So it's just nice to see. I think you made the right choice. You know, it, it's a pretty significant lead and um, we'll have to just delay Stephen King a little while longer. I think he'll survive. Yeah. Stephen King doesn't quite need the FTF bump <laughs> to. I mean, to neither does Robin Hobb or, or our friend over at the right in the three body problem. Can you hit me with his name on the, um, on the generator? Because oh, he's got I'm, a Hugo and a Netflix adaptation with Benioff and Wise. He's good too. Hold on. Oh, and, but, I was uh, looking yeah. up. But Stephen King, probably the Xin least. So. Oh. Yeah, he's yep. fine. I mean, he's good. He's so. going to be okay, I think. As <laughs> will Paul Greengrass and uh, Goodman. <laughs> good man. <laughs> good man and Greengrass mm-hmm. uh, will continue to thrive as well. So I, I feel like everyone involved in this is a winner. Yes, especially I us think so too. we especially get to keep reading us. Robin Hobb. <laughs> and now we get to decide which one we're going to read first. Isn't that right, Dom? That's exactly right, Charles. And since the beginning of Friends Pitching Fantasy in the in the before times, during the 2020 <laughs> times, a uh, very different <laughs> period of our While lives. Brandon Sanderson was writing away. <laughs> yes, while Brandon Sanderson was thriving and writing a million books and we were just trying to figure out a way to to do anything um yes we've been (laughs) we've been flipping the virtual coin 
for four <laughs> years now, and they, it, we're not going to stop now, Charles. I'll have to call no. it in the virtual air and yep. let the people know what it lands on. <laughs> we only do audio on here. Is the suspense not killing you guys? It's killing me. I mean, this is serious implications. Live ship traders is a lot of reading, and it's like if that's what's that's what's happening. Okay, we are. Can we agree that if live ship traders wins, we read the first book of live ship traders, then we read Yumi. Then oh yeah, we yeah, we'll spice second, it up. Like, we'll, yeah, we'll spice it up. We'll take our time with it. Honestly, like we can't yeah. just read them all straight through. You know, we'll we'll spice it up for the for the listeners and for ourselves. Okay. I agree. I agree. Sounds so, like a plan, Charles. All right. So well, I guess the way this has worked historically is I flip and you call. I guess what I always forget is what do you yeah, call? So, <laughs> like if you guess the tells. call. No, yeah. but if I win, <laughs> I believe it's the books that I pitched. Okay. Are, like, so if I guess correctly – then we will read Yumi and the Nightmare Painter first. Got it. I believe that's it, but either way, that's what it will be this time. I feel like at this point we need to go back and check your record, but I feel like you win a consistent amount of times. I like I'm... always win, and I always pick <laughs> tails. <laughs> at that least should the last be statistically few times. very unlikely, but <laughs> you know what? Here we are. It's Google. I mean, it's got to be legit. It's bas- it feel it's basically a real coin. So yes. All right. Well, guys, let, the excitement is mounting. We've reached the pinnacle of our three-part Friends Pitching Fantasy series. Six fantastic books have been pitched in this series. Two have been selected. And now we are here to pick which book we are going to read first. You know, like you can't read two at the same time. or I guess you can, but we're not going to do that. One episode has to come out before the other. So we need to be realistic about these things, and we need to go ahead and flip the coin and figure out which one we're going to read first. Are you ready, Dylan? I am ready. All right, here we go. The virtual coin will be flipped in three, two, one. It's in the air. Tails never fails. He says tails never fails. No! But it's heads! Oh, man, probability got away from you on that one, my friend. Which means that the next book we are reading is The Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb, book one of the Live Ship Traders trilogy. There we go, guys. We did it. Dylan, congratulations on another successful uh, Friends Pitching Fantasy series. We will be coming at you guys with The Ship of Magic soon. Followed by Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. I'm feeling pretty good. This is a strong lineup. Yes, I'm feeling really good besides I'm I am reeling from that coin flip defeat. <laughs> I I think I was I was on such a big winning streak that <laughs> I thought I was unstoppable, but the odds uh the coin flip <laughs> is a great leveler and it comes for mm. us all eventually, Charles. And mm, well this said, time, Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> This time the it got me, but I, I mean, usually I don't care. Act, I actually, again, don't care if I win the coin flip from the perspective of I don't care which book we read first. I'm excited about both of the uh, next books. Mm-hmm. So I do just, it hurts when you lose the coin flip from the perspective of a competitor, but I'm excited, Charles, Ship of Magic. I'm sure it's going to be great and Uh, You can't go wrong with Robin Hobb and you can't go. I mean, Robin Hobb and Brandon Sanderson just taking a step back is like pretty much as standard friends talking fantasy uh, book coverage as it comes. And seriously i think it's a return to a return to form for a return to form indeed two titans in the industry and you know some of their newest and latest and greatest works. Uh, we have an exciting couple of shows ahead of us. But I think until then, Dylan, we need to play that sweet, sweet outro music because we got a lot of reading to do. We do. Let's get to that sweet, sweet outro music pumping, Charles. All right, here we go. 
thank you everyone, one and all, for listening to yet another very exciting episode of the Friends Talking Fantasy Podcast. If you like what you heard today, if you want to support this show, one of the best ways to do that is by following us and engaging with us over on the socials. That's at the FTF Podcast on Instagram and TikTok, and then at the FTF Podcast with the number one at the end for uh, Twitter slash X. Now, Dylan, if they like what they heard today and they want to support the show even more than following us and engaging with us over on the socials, what can they do? Toss five stars to our podcast, which you can do over on Spotify. All you gotta do is go to the Friends Talking Fancy podcast feed, click about for some reason, and then <laughs> go where the stars are. You can figure it out from there. And you can also rate and review on Apple Podcasts. That means you can write nice things about us. You can say, hey, Charles, you are a man of people. Don't let Dylan ever tell you that you are it, even when you're not wearing your plain white hat with nothing on it. Wow, that would be nice. I would really enjoy that, yeah. But you don't have to do that, because just listening is more than enough. Thank you so much. I agree, Dylan. Just listening. You guys are amazing for making it all the way to the end. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are awesome. And as always, go forth and conquer, friends.